So your Subaru blew its head gaskets and now you need to resurface your heads. Stick around and we're gonna go over backyard machining that will make these flat and ready for a fresh set of gaskets. This can also be applied to mini V6 heads. I've done 3.4 Toyota heads. I have not done V8 heads, which will be the same as like a straight four. This is backyard machining 101. Let's get into it. This Subaru is a 2010 Outback with only 120K. And I did actually pull the heads off in the car. I'm used to working on the 05 to 09s. Those are easier to remove. But this one, they make, the bigger body style made it easier. So if you guys want to see a video on how to do it in car, I'm happy to make one. If I get one comment saying you want to see how to do it in car, I got you. Here are the heads. They actually have MLS gaskets and they are from Six Star. If you know about Subaru, Six Star is a great brand. And we can see the machine marks. This head has 100% been resurfaced. So these have already had head gaskets done. I actually just did head gaskets on a 2009 Forester and it was still having an overheating problem. I pinpointed it to a clogged heater core. My buddy owns Tao Subi Garage. They actually just shut down. They're the ones I bought the lift from. It is still sitting on the trailer, which is why I bought a tow truck anyway. Now that he shut down, uh, he just sends all his customers to me. He gives them my phone number and says, when they blow an engine and says, if you wanna sell your car, he'll buy it. So 120K. He put a motor in it, and at the time they did the head gaskets and stuff, I think the original motor went out because of the bad heater core. Then he put another motor in with fresh head gaskets, and once again, the heater core took it out, and that's where we're at now. So I want to urge you, if you have bad head gaskets, check your heater cores. I ordered one on eBay, and they sent me this pile of shite, like... I didn't do that. It came like that. Someone obviously tried to install it. They gave me all my money back, but that's super annoying when I was waiting on that. So I went to the junkyard and pulled three heater cores. I got that Forester running good, and now I have two more in stock. So most likely one of these will go in that Outback. Anyway, I don't care where you get a heater core. If you have a local junkyard, you can grab one, just blow through it and make sure the one I took out of the Forester, you couldn't blow through. These ones, nice and clear. So I'm happy putting those in. Inspecting these head gaskets, they look really good. And the car was actually running really good. It was just puffing smoke. So my guess is we have warpage here or on this head, we can see right here, that could be the spot as well. If you wanna be sure, grab your Machina straight edge. This one I picked up on eBay for like 20, 30 bucks. And then you always want a razor blade before you check. And this alone might reveal the blown head gasket. And I think it does. That is our spot right there. It doesn't matter how good of a head gasket you use. Once you get it hot enough, it's gone. MLS cures a lot, but overheating is still overheating. I, I bought this straight edge and it is great to have, but it's really not necessary. You're going to be able to see the sh how straight the head is once we start resurfacing it. First things first, let's go to Home Depot and get all our supplies. Gotta have a grocery getter. The first thing we need is a flat surface to lay them on. So I'm over here in the tile section and really you just wanna check reflections and find the flattest piece. So you can just see how the lights reflect off it. And I have found this thing. And it looks super straight. So that is good for me. There's some that are flat, but they're just not reflective. And up close, they're a little rough. I don't like those. I, I like the glass-like ones. And if you have a piece of glass, a thick piece of glass, that will work just fine. Duct tape to hold it down. 3M is the best. Shop towels, you only need one, but they only have a three pack. WD-40. This is to lubricate the sandpaper. It will keep it from loading up with aluminum. And last but most importantly, we need sandpaper. This is Diablo 12 by 18. It has a sticky back that will stick right to this tile. At one point I had to order these online because no one in the store could tell me where to get them. They're in the tool rental department and they're four floor sanders. I recommend 80 grit. If your head is really bad, you can start with 60. So go 60, 80, 
you don't need to go 120. 80's great. So I recommend having at least two sheets of sandpaper. Most of the time you only need one, but I live 30 minutes away, so I'm not driving back. Looks like we did $42. Tile's only four bucks and the tape's seven. Most of your cost is gonna be in sandpaper. That stuff is not cheap, but it lasts a long time. It just depends on how warped your heads are. Honestly, I've done like four heads on one piece of paper, but it does cut better when it's sharp. So if it dulls, I like changing. And then a lot of this is startup cost. The first set of heads is the most expensive as you have to buy uh, duct tape and stuff. You're not gonna need to buy that the second time. And I actually have everything in stock. I just rebought everything to show you guys exactly what you need. So thank me in the comments. Let's go ahead and get back to the shop. I didn't include gloves or paper towels or brake clean in that breakdown. You should have gloves and paper towels around as well as brake clean. If not, go buy some. First thing you wanna do is brake clean any part where uh, your duct tape will be touching because you want it to stick. I got two cans of brake clean. This is more than enough to get through this project. I always mount my tile right up to the corner of a table. So I'll clean where the edges are. Clean the tile as well, because there's residue on it from just people touching it and dust. And at 10 bucks a sheet, I don't like wasting sandpaper. Now position your tile. I have a little rough set a piece of uh, paper on it. Tape the tile down. If you don't have a metal table, if yours is wood, I have put screws by them on all the corners and use that to just hold it from moving. That works as well. Now we can peel the sheeting and this stuff can be uh, not fun. It likes to rip and do random stuff. So just try a different corner if it's not cooperating. Generally, you can find one and then pull it slow because they like to rip, stupid. Right now it's about to. Made in Switzerland, this is great stuff. If your heads aren't bad, you generally only need one piece. We will see how these are. Razor blade your head off. Any gunk you can prevent getting on the paper, it will save the paper and make it last longer. You just wanna keep it from getting loaded. If you're hitting dirt like that, try to knock it away from the head, especially this oil passage. Look at all that dirt right there. You can wash your heads first if you want. I wash mine after, so I'm not worried about it. We're ready to begin. Use gloves. You don't want ground up aluminum going in your hands. You wanna draw the head, essentially. This is my old can of WD. Now, plop your head down. I do recommend using two old paper towels to make this hurt your hands less. You just use them to cushion the head. And now I go at a 45. That way I can come over here and come at a 45 again and cross cut the head. Now that the initial pass is done, we can see what's going on with the head. And this one looks like it's gonna clean super easy. So right there and right there. We got a little right there. Now you see all this uh, aluminum in WD. You wanna throw a paper towel on it, rub it down and pull up. Don't scrub it or you'll load the sandpaper with a blue paper shop towel. But if you just go like this a couple times, it cleans the paper up and it's ready for more lube. Now I will tell you guys, this head is cleaning really fast. We'll see the other one. I've had really warped heads where uh, you're here for a while. You know about body work, cross cutting is, we got the grain cut this way. So now 
uh, the sandpaper is going to run in those grooves and not cut as fast. So if you oppose the grooves, you'll come and knock it down and it cuts way faster. Don't be afraid to waste a bunch of paper towels and stuff. Think about the alternative, which is paying a machine shop. Don't push down. You could warp or distort the flatness of the tile. Let the weight of the head do the work and just push it back and forth. Let the sandpaper do the work. And I try to soak up the aluminum before it runs into the coolant passages. And there we have it. That is uh, fully, the most important part is around the fire ring or the combustion chamber. And we are 100% resurfaced. And that one took like literally under five minutes. I wanna be 100% clear and say they normally do not go that easy. It just depends on how hot you got them. So I'm gonna barely touch the second one just to show you guys like how you can identify where it's blown. Okay, here's the second head. I just barely touched it uh, and got the grain moving in one direction but we can clearly see right here this is where it is blown right here and right here the exhaust obviously gets hot that's what moves first so that is the cause of our blown head gasket once i get those out get it looking like that we will be good to go 2010 and later ejs seem to run these supports the earlier ones are different and these ones seem to warp less this has been resurfaced all nice but see, these jackets tend to let it move more. When they have the little support, they warp less. This one, I remember, I had to take 12 thousandths out of it. And that one head alone took like an hour, whereas both of these are touching up in about five minutes per head. So how long this takes really just depends on how bad you overheated it. And if you overheated it really bad, I'm going to tell you right now, the valves aren't seating. You're going to need to lap them or have a valve job done. The way to check is to pressure wash them. I'll be pressure washing these later, but when you pressure wash them, if anything goes past the valves, you're, you're not in good shape. It's gonna miss. So I will turn these cams till it's unloaded, pressure wash, uh, and if we're all good, based on the way it ran, it's good. I know that, I can tell you right now, it ran smooth. So I'm gonna finish this up, wash them up, and I'll be ready to pop them back on the car. Good morning, guys. I got the heads resurfaced. I had to take a break and tow my BMW to BMW and get my heart broken and get told it needs a new engine. Yay, N20s. Anyway, we're on to the cleaning portion. What you want to use is this Sam's Club Purple Commercial uh, Kitchen Degreaser. Once you use this stuff, you won't use Purple Power. It's so much better. This is a 32 ounce bottle. I fill 25 with water and then fill the rest with degreaser. A lot of people think going stiffer is better or going straight degreaser. It's not. It makes it create a bunch of this white residue and it doesn't actually clean as good. So that's the ratio-ish that I use and it works pretty good. Let's go ahead and pressure wash some heads. I've turned the cam so it's unloaded. That's where we want it. And we will blast in the ports and see if any water comes through. Some will come through because it's pushing on some valves right there. So if it comes through on that, you want to rotate it so it pushes on the other valves and check it like that. Take a look at how carbon loaded this is before this degreaser. Let it soak for two to five minutes. Don't let it dry though. That's how the white residue appears. Degrease it again. Let it sit a few minutes, pressure wash. Now I'm gonna check the valves. So that one has water going past it. This one does not. This is a bad sign, but it's probably just because it's loaded, so I'll rotate it away. Now, no water. That means you have a good head. Check the exhaust as well. We have a little bit of seepage coming past this valve. Check it out. There could just be crap in the valve seat if you 
you want to be sure push the spring down by rotating this then pressure wash around it open them like that close them and recheck so this one you should lap pop this one out and address what is going on there. This is why you check though. If you don't, that cylinder could miss. Here's the before, they are filthy. And here's after some degreaser and pressure washing. Looks great. This is the same service we would do at the machine shop. You can just do it at home. This one valve is not seating. Valve seat looks pretty darn good. Not crazy amounts of carbon on it. The valve looks warped. It wasn't seating right there to there. Here it was, there's not. Quick lap job, we'll take care of this. I have a valve grinding compound, Permatex, piece of hose, put this in a drill, fits over the top of this valve. Make sure not to get any of this grinding compound on this or you will destroy the guide. Anyway, the second head touched up very nice, so these heads are ready to go. I just wanted to update you guys, I only had one valve and it could miss on that cylinder. So address, when you pressure wash, pay attention to water going past valves, address any issues. Anyway, that is how to get your Subaru heads back in order to go back on the car. Baby, they're gone. I gave your kids away. I'm so sorry, baby. I know. I touch up heads anytime they're off. Absolutely anytime. Rod knock block, do a short block. I see people just head slap them. I've machined them. They're not straight. My buddy needed a set of single cam heads. I had some that were out three thousandths measured with a straight edge and a feeler. I told him they need to be resurfaced. I sold them to him. He owns a dealership, keep in mind. He put them on a car with new head gaskets and sold it and said it ran fine. So am I saying it won't run? No, I'm not saying that. Am I saying it's shit work? Yes, it's shit work to not touch up your heads. I do this every time I have heads off, no matter what. Everybody, thank you for watching my videos. I really appreciate it. If anything here helped you, subscribe, like. If you have friends, this would help. Send them the video, share it. I'm so grateful for all the support I've been getting. We'll see you guys next time.